This is Turd Flinging Monkey for TFM News. I'm going to be responding to an article that appeared in Yahoo News on November 23rd, 2016, called Female Monkeys Use While to Rally Troops. Now this was easily the most requested article that I do a video on this week. And probably just because it has the word monkey in it, I don't know. But this is a great article. One of the things I love about the study of animals and animal behavior is it's largely free of the political correctness and the bullshit you see when studying humans. You couldn't study a human society with this kind of matter-of-fact speaking because, oh my god, it's so offensive, oh, you're not respecting their culture, blah, it's, it's horseshit. And because we're all primates, whether we're humans or monkeys, we share characteristics with our ancestors. So it's worth looking at how animals behave and how that's analogous to human behavior to help us understand our own motivations. And also to understand where culture begins and instincts end. Because if animals do it, it really can't be said that that's a social construct. Now the animals in question are vervet monkeys. But anyway, let's just get into the article and we'll take it one step at a time. The article begins, quote, Female vervet monkeys manipulate males into fighting battles by lavishing attention on brave soldiers while giving non-combatants the cold shoulder, researchers said Wednesday. As in humans, it turns out, social incentives can be just as big a driver for male monkeys to go to war as the resources they stand to gain from fighting, whether it be territory or food. Quote, ours is the first study to demonstrate that any non-human species use manipulative tactics, such as punishment or rewards, to promote participation in intergroup fights, unquote. Study co-author Gene Aranasu, I have no idea. A primate specialist at the University of Zurich told AFP, Arsenio, what, I'm just going to call him Arsenio. So Arsenio and a team studied four vervet monkey groups at a game reserve in South Africa for two years. They observed that after a skirmish with a rival gang, usually over food, females would groom males that had fought hardest and snapping at those that abstained. When the next battle came along, both those singled out for attention and those aggressively shunned would participate more vigorously in combat. The researchers reported in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B, quote, Thus females appear to use grooming as reward for participation and aggression as punishment for defection, unquote, said Arsenio. Vervent monkeys live in mixed gender groups and both sexes take part in frequent battles with rival troops. Only a handful fight each time. Males are larger than females and have larger canine teeth, making their presence valuable on the front lines. Success in battle ensures control over territory and food sources, a key concern for females who take care of the young. But why would males risk involvement in a potentially high-stakes battle just for a bit of female attention? It's all about sex, the researchers believe. Quote, Receiving punishment, unquote, for not taking part in battles, quote, could damage the dot 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 male social relationships, unquote, with females in the group, the researchers wrote. On the other hand, being rewarded could, quote, potentially signal to other female group members that the male is a valuable social partner, unquote, likely boosting, quote, male mating success, unquote. So what can we learn about this? The women aren't selecting the men who make the best partners, that they have the most in common with, that will make the best fathers and help them raise the young. They're going for the men who protect the territory and bring home the bacon, or in this case, bananas or whatever the fuck. Because the bigger, stronger males who fight off the rivals command the territory and the food, and the females need the food when they're pregnant and nursing, or simply to eat for themselves. Women are going to go for the useful men, the big, strong men who can protect them and provide for them. This has been true longer than humans have walked on two legs, and it's not going to change. So the first thing we need to accept is that male disposability, female protection, hypergamy, they're simply part of nature. They're not going anywhere. What isn't part of nature is gynocentrism. Some people conflate this male disposability and female protection with gynocentrism because the women aren't expected to pull their weight along with the men. Well, the truth is they can't. They are physically, mentally, and emotionally incapable, at least in humans. I'm not really sure about vervet monkeys. If a female vervet monkey tried to fight off a male who is bigger and stronger and has large canine teeth, she'd get her fucking ass kicked. And she knows it and he knows it, which is why she's not going to do it. She's going to find a man who will protect her, and she's going to reward that man with sex. That's been the deal since the dawn of time. But what you don't see these male vervet monkeys doing is turning around and enslaving themselves to women. 
worshipping the women, putting the woman at the head, putting up with women's shit. They don't do that. You don't see that in nature. Women don't respect weak men. They don't do it in nature. They don't do it in humans. We can't do anything about female hypergamy, about men having to protect and provide for women. That's simply the deal. They have vaginas and wombs, and we have to bring the resources and the protection in order to get access to those vaginas and wombs. What we don't have to do is put up with our bullshit. Until we have technology where we don't need women for reproduction, some sort of asexual technology like the artificial womb or cloning or something along those lines, the deal has never changed. What has changed is men have subserviated themselves far beyond that initial deal. And that is the problem. When the male is bigger and stronger, you're not going to have matriarchy. Not unless men allow it. Humans seem to be unique among the animals, where the male is clearly bigger and stronger than the female. The male does far more to build society than the female. But for some crazy reason, they just insist on elevating the woman to an equal. No reason or evidence needed. You do not see this anywhere else in nature. The bigger, stronger man is in charge everywhere else in nature. And in species where the woman is bigger and stronger, such as the spotted hyena, the black widow, the queen bee, when the female is bigger and stronger, the female's in charge. Unfortunately with humans, we are a sexually dimorphic species. The male is bigger and stronger than the female. The male does far more than the female. There is no reason to have this self-imposed restriction on men to pull them down to women's level in the name of equality. We don't need to be gynocentric. We may have to protect women. We may have to provide for women. I mean, after all, if we were invaded by a rival country or whatever, women cannot defend themselves against men. They get their fucking asses kicked, and you know it. It will fall to men to defend women. It will fall to men to provide for women because they can't provide for themselves. People say, well, you know, it's, it's the current year. Women can have their own jobs. They can make their own money. No, they can't. They can get jobs only because of gender quotas. Without the government quotas, without the government throwing money at these women, you wouldn't see them out in the workplace outside of some very specific fields where women thrive, such as nursing and kindergarten teacher and shit like that. And that's ignoring the women who are outright dependent on welfare and child support. If you took those things away, they would be destitute. That is not strong, independent women who don't need no man. That is a weak, dependent woman who is wholly reliant on men. Just collective men in the form of taxpayers, as opposed to one man in the form of an actual husband or something like that. So the deal hasn't changed. The deal can't change. Not unless we use some kind of technology to change our biology. Until that day comes, the deal remains. The gynocentrism doesn't have to. This is Turd Flinging Monkey, signing off.